The latest numbers here now uh, regarding the coronavirus cases worldwide. I want to share this number with you. We are now at over a million total confirmed cases. I've been showing you this map here every single morning. Keep in mind, last Friday when I did this, we were about 600,000 on this number, 54,000 total deaths right now. Here in the U.S., we have about a quarter of a million cases and over 6,000 deaths. As the grim coronavirus totals just keep on stacking up here, some experts believe that uh, order should, should be extended to include the entire U.S. But the good news here is that more than 218,000 have fought the virus and they are already in recovery. And going into the weekend, officials continue to stress the importance of social distancing. And I can tell by the curve, and as it is today, that not every American is following it. Well, the focus of discussion right now is if every state needs a stay-at-home order. President Trump wants individual states to decide on whether a stay-at-home order is necessary because some areas have had relatively few COVID-19 cases. The White House is expected to issue new guidance urging Americans to cover their faces while they're out in public. There are now 966 confirmed cases in the county. Sadly, 16 people have died. San Diego law enforcement will begin cracking down on those violating public health orders in place. This means they will start issuing citations to those not in compliance with the public health orders issued by the state and county. These can carry up to a thousand dollar fine and up to six months in jail. It also is now mandatory for employees of essential businesses who are dealing with the public to wear facial coverings. Let's get to Stella now. Eric, thank you. And as you just heard Dr. Burke saying, not everyone is following the guidelines. The beaches are closed. Not everyone is following the rules. But listen to this. A new researcher, uh, a, a, not a new researcher, a researcher from San Diego here says the virus could spread if you are near the ocean. News 8's Netta Rampour joins us live in Del Mar with that part of the story. Good morning to you, Netta. This is interesting. Yeah, good morning. So, of course, you have seen those beach closure signs. We know they're out there to prevent people from gathering at the beaches, gathering the parking lots. There's a sign right here behind me, an officer behind me as well, trying to keep people away from Dog Beach here in Del Mar. Uh, but this researcher is saying, you know, it's not just surfers and swimmers in the ocean who are being told to stay away. She would actually tell runners and bicyclists to also stay farther from the water. And she's a atmospheric chemist with Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Kim Prather studies what the ocean churns up. She tells the LA Times this new coronavirus is light enough to float through the air much farther than we think. She says at the beach, the onshore breeze can send viral particles pretty far, and she calls this virus a real silent killer. You can't see it and you can't smell it. Now, we know the World Health Organization, the CDC, and San Diego Health Authorities have all warned that this virus spreads by droplets from sneezes and coughs, and it can spread by touching it on surface but they have not warned that it can be spread by the ocean or by the ocean spray. Local law enforcement believes the beaches are just too dangerous right now because they attract crowds of people who may gather close together. And that's why they've been out patrolling to keep people away. And they've asked that people please listen, even though the beach is one of San Diego's favorite activities, listen for their own safety, but also for the health and safety of others. Protect your responders by going out there. Somebody has to make a contact with you, be it a PD, lifeguard, park ranger, even fire if something happens to you. You're putting all of those people at risk. Yeah, and at last checked, four lifeguards have tested positive for COVID-19. So right now we do know there are closures up and down our coastline, but runners and cyclists, they've been allowed uh, to, you know, go jogging on the sidewalk or in those bike lanes close to the ocean. So this researcher is saying now they're going to be testing the air particles along the coast for any signs of the coronavirus. And I also want to point out the reason why we're in this location. There's actually a hill right next to us, trees right next to us, so we're not right alongside the ocean. We can't feel that ocean spray at all in this spot. Uh, but you can see the closure signs here behind me in Del Mar. And you guys were talking about the masks as well, and that's something we are working to find the proper covering. I had a scarf, kind of the closest thing. And, of course, when we're reporting, it's hard to hear us if we are covering our masks. So this is a, what I'll just use for now until we work on getting the better coverings that the county is recommending. And that's the latest here in Del Mar. We'll send it back to you guys. Netta, thank you for that report. Please stay safe. And starting today, parking lots will be closed at all parks, beaches throughout San Diego to stop groups from gathering in these areas. This is for all jurisdictions in the county. Officials say activities will be restricted to walking, 
hiking, or biking. And the Navy announced that they are now relieving Captain Brett Crozier of his command after he wrote a plea to the Navy for resources to combat the outbreak. The Navy said it was continually in contact with Crozier, but he never expressed the dire need. So far, 114 people have tested positive, and the Navy expects hundreds of more will follow. And according to the Labor Department, this morning, the economy shrank by 701,000 jobs in March, and the nation's unemployment rate rose to 4.4 percent. But that data doesn't even include yesterday's number, 6.6 .6 million people, jobless claims, and the struggle to pay rent. That struggle is very, very real. For many, it was due on the 1st, and thousands of San Diegans were not able to pay. Many are waiting on the checks. Uh, they're confused how to file. Assemblywoman, uh, Assembly member Todd Gloria hosted a Facebook Live Q&A with legal aid at work experts to help with questions about filing and getting in touch with California Employee Development Department. All right, thanks, Stella. Applications are set to open for federal loans designed to help keep small businesses open. This comes just a day after the state of California released its own plan. News 8's Chris Grow is here to break down what resources are available and the timeline to get that money so desperately needed right now, Chris. Yeah, a lot of small businesses struggling to stay open or have already closed and laid off employees because they just can't sim simply handle the shutdown that we're seeing because of the coronavirus pandemic. So the federal government has made available nearly $350 billion, and the Trump administration says that they are ready to go to start taking applications. Uh, you get the money, you'll get it the same day. You use this to pay your workers. Please bring your workers back to work. If you've let them go, you have eight weeks plus overhead. This is a very important program. However, some banks like J.P. Morgan Chase say they don't think they're ready to take any application starting today, or at least just yet. This, again, despite what you just heard from the Trump administration saying that everything is on track to start. Now, according to CBS News, the bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, and others are waiting on more guidance on exactly how the program will work. Now, as for the loan program itself, it's designed so that banks and financial institutions can distribute federally backed loans to small businesses to keep them afloat. As you heard there, it should be enough for many of them to stay running for at least eight weeks during these shutdowns that we are seeing due to the virus. The key part of all of this is that the loans can be forgiven if the money is used to avoid layoffs. Here in California, we found out yesterday that Governor Gavin Newsom is also taking a big step to help small businesses. He announced yesterday that the state will let businesses keep up to $50,000 in sales taxes over the next year. It's essentially an interest-free loan. It is a bridge loan. The money that you've already collected, you will not have to pay the state for 12 months. No penalties, no interest, de facto a loan. And I know that this can be very difficult or hard to navigate for a lot of small business owners as there is help here coming in from the federal government, the state government, and even on the city level. So if you go to cbs8.com, click on the hot button. We have a guide to help you get through this process. Back to you. Chris Girl, thanks for that. Small businesses nationwide have been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic, and the help just can't come soon enough, as Chris was just mentioning there. Restaurants have been mandated to operate by only offering takeout options. Stella's back with us here. And Stella, you talked to some small business owners, one of them operating on a skeleton crew right now. And honestly, she's uncertain of what this future holds. Yeah, you're right, Eric. I think a lot of small business owners feel this way, but hopefully with the governor's announcement yesterday, that will help a lot of people. So let me tell you about the Incredible Cafe. It's located in Rancho Bernardo. It's been around for more than 25 years, and uh, they've been hit really hard. They were actually featured on the Food Network last year. They thought that that would give them a boost, but with the coronavirus pandemic, it has hurt them. It's hurt so many. The Incredible Cafe has gone from 15 employees to three now. That includes the chef, 
the owner, Liz, and her daughter, Stephanie. They're not alone. In fact, a recent study from the California Restaurant Association says about six out of 10 restaurants have closed, like completely closed during this pandemic. For those still open, like the Incredible Cafe, Stephanie tells me it's been challenging. The transition itself has been challenging uh, from going from dine-in to takeout, especially using takeout platforms for the first time, like Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. Take a listen. Signing up for these websites are also really intimidating because the representatives are inundated with a ton of restaurants signing up last minute, similar to us. And so they're unable to really hold our hand and help us navigate through these platforms and we're trying to do the best we can. They also take a really big commission from our sales. And so it'd be really wonderful if our customers can just call us directly and their plates are ordered with us. And Stephanie also says for those who are on edge about ordering out, she says the chef wears a mask. He's constantly switching it out. He wears his gloves. They are following health department and CDC guidelines. They just want to reassure people they've had to change their business hours because they're mm -hmm. open for breakfast and lunch. So yeah. they shifted things around. They're open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. They used to open up at 6.30 in the morning, but there's just not enough business. Also, we have posted tons of links uh, attached to this story and I'll send it out for all of the resources if you're a small business owner where you need to go because that is very overwhelming employees who are looking for money as well there's lots of funds out there in fact Guy Fieri he launched a fund to help uh, uh, restaurants uh, that includes employees and all that stuff so those links will be attached to this story on our website cbs8.com Eric good to know there is help but we still need to do those takeout orders to help out our local businesses Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stella, for that. Later today, Governor Gavin Newsom will provide an update on the state's emergency actions today. Like he has been doing every day at noon, he's going to hold a media briefing to talk about what's being done to protect homeless Californians and the public. Just yesterday, he announced a package of state and federal assistance for California small businesses.